Hey, we're back, and we're bringing the fire and the fury. Woo! I know. Sheesh. <laughs> we'll catch you up uh, about the things that we missed from the break and look forward to what we've got going on in 2018. I cannot believe it's 2018. Uh, welcome to the New Year, folks. It's Tuesday, January 9th. Welcome to The Political Beat. You're tuning into the destination for TV. Super fan discussion. After Buzz TV. And now. Let the buzz begin. Hey, 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 we're back. Welcome to After Buzz TV's The Political Beat, the millennial show and podcast, uh, breaking down the latest in Washington politics and news from around the country and the world. I'm your host, Drexel Hurd, the millennial moderate left. I changed it. I changed it from moderate to the millennial moderate because it made a little bit more sense. Moderate left, uh, you can follow me on social media at Drexel Heard. Well, but now I'm confused. What's a millennial moderate different from a plain old it moderate? It just sounds better. Oh. Yeah. Okay, well then I guess I'm the millennial lefter of the left. Yeah, I, I just made I yeah, I just made it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Probably good if I knew about this stuff. But okay. Left of the left, millennial left of the left, whatever it is, I'm cooler than Drexel. And oh, I'm my Chelsea goodness. Galicia at Chelsea Galicia. Uh, yeah, be sure to follow the show at Political Beat uh, TV on Twitter where you can, um, you know, find things, uh, fun things. Uh, we're so glad to be back. Second week of January. Um, it's already so. It's already a little I crazy. Thought, I'm like, okay, we're just going to ease back into this. Like, no. oh no. No, there's no. There's no easing. There is no easing on down that road. Oh, but it's some good stuff. Yeah, I, I, it feels like we never left this studio. Uh, we were just here last with Christian and Scott and uh, doing that double show. Um, and uh, how was your break? Well, I'm a nerd, so like my break was fun because you know I got a new like investment property and I cleaned up finances and I'm like ready for 2018 and oh, all sorts of things. That <laughs> People <asleep> <laughs> during, during all that. But but you know. 2018 is going to be a good year. Nice. Mm -hmm. Do anything fun for New Year's? I am not a New Year's person. I think it's a bit silly. I don't know. I just, I'm just not into it. I feel like everybody that I've asked that question to has been like, you know, it was so low key. I did a low key New Year's. And I was like, well, yeah, after 2017, after dealing with Donald Trump for an entire year, we all needed a little break. So we all chose like the least amount of work that we could do for New Year's Eve. I like that explanation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just played board games and drank with some friends and, and uh, Tim uh, worked and then he met us after and that was... It was, that was it. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, it's only a little less fabulous than my investment thing, but you know, yeah. we can't all be nerds at the same time. Yeah, I didn't do any reading, so I wasn't very nerdy either over this oh, break. Reading? I watched oh, a lot yeah, of Harry reading. Potter, so that's very nerdy, but that was about it. Hmm. Um, well, while we were hoping to be considered for tomorrow's um, Fake News Awards, live from the White House. Uh, we were. We, we are. We are for your consideration, if, oh. which you can find our for your consideration uh, thing, uh, to Donald Trump on uh, uh, Political Beat oh, TV on wow, Twitter. Oh, wow, I missed that. Yeah. That would be the honor of a lifetime. Wouldn't it? Best Political Millennial Podcast Fake news. Fake news award of the oh year. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, in the breakdown, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna uh, we're gonna run through some of the stories that made headlines over the break. Uh, in the breakdown, we're gonna talk about some of the laws from right here in California that could essentially make their way uh, to your own cities. Um, and then we've got um, a big bombshell today. Diane Feinstein just dropped the bomb um, on America. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Fusion GPS, and then it's an election year with all 435 congressional seats up for grabs. Uh, might we see a blue wave in oh, uh, can't wait to find that out. this country desperately needs? So uh, let's get started on a few things. So, uh, <sighs> Chelsea, the tax what do we bill, miss? the tax bill, the bill that I really thought was not going to happen. And then it did. It did. We said that. Remember when I was like, oh, I don't think it's going to happen. No, I was they pretty don't have the sure votes for it was it. not. I thought that it was going to be voted down by the deficit hawks the people that do not like adding to the bob corkers the 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 well i thought it was gonna be, i thought bob corker was going to be the vote that they that you know they couldn't count on 
which he has turned a 180 on the way that he has handled Trump. Him and Lindsey Graham, I don't know what's happening. I think they're all being blackmailed. And I think mm. if, I mean, they need to That's like not that blink off. twice. <laughs> if we will if come something's save happening, you. we Democrats will come and save you. Um, and uh, yeah, it surprised me. I, I, I was just, uh, hmm, yeah. 5148 50, um, in the House passed it 20. Uh, 224 to 201. And that it's so unpopular among Republicans, I mean, citizens. Right. And that it's still passed so... Well, they don't care. Republicans don't, they just don't care about, what do I say like every episode? Republicans don't care about the American people. Well, but I don't understand then how the Republican people keep electing them. I wonder if this will be... Finally, they'll be like, all right, enough. I see for sure that you know that I don't like this tax bill and you still voted for it. Right, because I don't, I, again, I always say that I believe that Republican voters, A, they vote, um, they're, they're one issue voters on social issues. So automatically, if you are pro choice, that's it for them. Um, and, and we're talking strictly conservatives. But on the other side, their religion, um, lends them to believe that that their party's inherently good and that they're going to they're going to make good on their promise. It's, I mean, that almost sounds like a mean thing to say and at this point I feel like I need to step in and defend you from anybody who's like, "Wow, Drexel, what a mean thing to say, but like you used to be one of them." Yeah, but that was a long time ago when the party was a little bit different. <laughs> like things were a little bit different back then. I mean, I mean, I mean, in the in the terms of it was not this party that we see today. It was a very, you know, I always talk about the Republican Party in 2000, 2004 is very different time. And when you're a military kid, you don't you see the world through national security lenses because that's what you live through. And so are do we right now have people that the Republicans that voted in these people because they thought Big military, big on no, but defense. those type of Republicans aren't voting for Republicans because of military strength. I mean, they want strength projected because they want to. I mean, you know that 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 voter loves this manly, uh, this masculine persona. Okay, how do we fix that? Um, watch RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> And what's that going to do for us? I don't know. It might make folks a little happier. I don't know. I just, um, I, I mean, wow. I mean, the fact that this, you know, tax bill, this new tax law, it's not even a bill anymore. It's right. a law. It's, it's the law. It's going to hurt Trump voters, you know, more and more over the years, right? Because these, the benefits to this uh, law kind of get phased out in the next couple of years, while the benefits to corporations only get enhanced over right. the years. So and Republicans, you know, it's one of those things that Republicans have made harder. You know, when when Democrats uh, voted in Obamacare or, or the Affordable Care Act, they put safeguards in place to make sure that it would be harder to dismantle. And something tells me um, from everything that I've read that Republicans have made it have have put their own safeguards in there. So when Democrats do sweep into power, it's going to be a little bit harder for them to dismantle some of those things. Wow, that's um, frightening. Speaking of one of those uh, Republicans that voted for this tax bill, uh, Orrin Hatch is retiring. Did you see Bye -bye. that? Like, I'm not sad about it. I only heard about it because it was like the whisper behind Senator Romney. And right. I was like, wait, huh, what? And so it was like people are already over talking about the fact that Orrin Hatch retired or is going to retire soon, even though Trump basically begged him not to. Yeah, went to Utah, did a rally, called Orrin Hatch on stage, and was like, I really hope that you don't leave us. He had that accent? That's the only. That's only. That's that's You've the only. You've been doing some really frightening accents today. Are they accurate? Is what I want to know. Well, I'm. I was. I was. I was Jefferson Beauregard sessions <laughs> on uh, on the sh on Hellbent podcast uh, yesterday. Uh, today I was I'm Donald Trump on the show today. I, I I I'm not sure. I mean I am I'm not you know at all sad that Orrin Hatch is going to bye bye and I mean it's so bizarre that at this point the idea of Senator Romney sounds like. Whoa, gosh, okay, reason. Yeah. 
w rationale, except that mm -hmm. I don't know if he would really vote all that differently when push comes to shove. I don't think that he will. I mean, obviously, from an economic side, from a business side of it, he would obviously be on the side of business. And, and that's what the things that we know. We already know Mitt Romney. From 2012, we're not going to learn anything new about Mitt Romney if he when he runs. And is he going to uh, vote any differently than the way Orrin Hatch is voted? Uh, um, I think we'd have to look back at his at the way that he governed Massachusetts, probably a little bit more liberal liberally. But but he's going to represent Utah here, right? So I, I don't know. I don't think Utah is as liberal as Massachusetts. They are not. Um, and maybe Evan McMullen will jump into the race. Remember, he ran for president. He's the the uh, ex CIA agent who ran uh, for president. He might jump into the race, but I have not. He was on MSNBC last. I I have not heard anything from him that indicates that he's interested in running for that seat. Um, uh, the FBI. The, the other. Uh, well, I think we're getting to it. Oh, soon. But I am just so excited to get to it in Jeff Flake announcing that he's not going to run again. Well, Jeff Flake announced a long time ago that he wasn't going to run. And then today. But Joe Arpaio said, bing, 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 bing. Joe Arpaio kind of reminds me of Yosemite <laughs> Sam. <laughs> like, like <laughs> he's just <laughs> he's just shooting him up in there. And, and that's, that is my picture of Joe Arpaio. Life is a cartoon to that. Rounding up the immigrants. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is Joe oh Arpaio. Oh, my God. At first, I was appalled by the idea that he was going to run for the Senate. And then I'm like, wait a minute. You know, I have this whole new way of looking at things. I, I can't even tell you this interesting awakening thing occurred to me over the break. But now I'm saying almost everything is good news. It's very bizarre. And I really do see this as good news. Why? Because I think that this is the whole Roy Moore, Doug Jones. Ed Gillespie situation yeah. all over again. Um, but for those who watch the Trump report, why you should really be invested in this race is that Christian and I have a bet. Because Christian believes that Arpaio is going to win. He sometimes how, believes that because Arpaio was actually convicted of a crime and isn't just some potential child molester, but an actual criminal convict, that it makes him more likely to be voted in. Uh, I think that that's ridiculous. But when Christian loses, he is going to have to wear the pink underwear that Arpaio had the prisoners wear. On and his I, head? I think we should add that. I think we should add that. Mm -hmm. It will be his pussy hat. Oh. For the woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I yeah. didn't think about We're, taking it there, but yeah, yeah. I think we Women's should. Women's March coming up January 21st. But January 20th, sorry. If Republicans vote for Arpaio for senator... I don't think that they will. Arizona, I just, uh, I mean, yeah. And thank goodness, you know, the voice of reason, um, you know, Scott Moore with his, you know, stats was listing off how badly Arpaio lost in this last election for sheriff. And so he's loved-ish in Arizona, but definitely not that much. Yeah. Um, but I am looking forward to him running to ruin the race for Republicans because this is how an unlikely Democrat will come away with the seat. Well, like I, I said to you earlier, Jeff Flake was already um, unpopular and there is there was a Republican, uh, I can't remember what her name is, uh, uh, Kim, um, I think that's Kim Kel Kim Charles Kim. I thought Kim Charles Kim was in New Jersey, but Kim Charles Kim. Kim is in Arizona. Actually. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and I believe that that was the challenger that was going to go up against John McCain, um, but now is running for Jeff Flake's seat. So if Joe Arpaio gets in, it's going to be another Luther Strange, yeah. uh, uh, Roy Moore situation for Arizona. Yeah. Good times ahead. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's, uh, the oh. last thing I, I just want to talk real quick about, uh, for those that don't know, uh, your vote is safe uh, in the state, uh, across the country uh, because the Voter Fraud Commission is not going to come and, and, or at least not anytime soon, come and try to grab any of your information and then use it to their advantage because that's what Republicans do. Um, I feel like we're so mean to them, but it's like, But it's that's true. What that's the reality. All right. Well, I don't know if we're mean. We're just is is the truth. The truth is mean. I guess sometimes the truth hurts. The truth does. I know. Hurt. I just don't want to seem so jaded that we think that they are just downright evil and can't do anything right. But I, I don't think they're evil. Mm -hmm. I think that they um, they're just really bad people. 
Oh, yeah. okay. But you I know mean, there was no no good reason for this voter fraud no. commission at all. Other than scaring the shit out of people. Right. But uh, secretaries of state were just like not going Both along with it. Both Republicans and Democrats. Because they would have had to violate law to turn over Correct. people's personal information. Yeah. And some people care about not breaking the law. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so, I Which, don't know. We'll see. for some people, would segue nicely into this FBI Clinton Foundation update. Yeah. Um, yeah. Listen, uh, 30 years later, uh, Republicans are still... <laughs> Attacking Hillary Clinton, um, even though she's not running for anything, even though she's no, she's nowhere to be found. Listen, she's in the woods with Justin Timberlake. Uh, oh, really? I didn't hear about that. No, Justin Timberlake. Listen, <laughs> Chelsea's break uh, was clearly uh, did not have a lot of uh, pop culture in it. No, actually, Justin Timberlake has a new album coming out. Yeah, but what he's is called Man in the Woods, and and he's out there with Hillary Clinton. Well, I'm totally. He's not up. out there with Hillary Clinton. I mean, the I think so. The album is called "Man in the Woods." I got it. It was a shitty song that he just released, though, uh, called "Filthy." That's it's what not I heard. Good. It's not good. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah. So you know, FBI is uh, looking into uh, Clinton Foundation because Donald Trump has nothing else to do but look at uh, guerrilla television on his TV. What? Um, all right. <laughs> just making. Is that something else from "In the Woods"? Yeah. Hello. All Gosh, right. Chelsea. Uh, California. Oh yes. Our state. Love California. Sunshine. Mm -hmm. Not Sunshine State. No, that's... No, what are we? Florida. We're, we're the, we have a bear. We're, the, we're not the bear state, though. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are we? We're the, the golden state. Golden mm -hmm. state uh, has been this administration's worst nightmare over the past year. And it seems that we're only getting worse for the likes of Trump and uh, Jabba's and Beauregard. Oh, my God. Uh, Sessions, the Attorney General. As of January 1st, a whole crop Ooh, of new laws... What? Just because they got rid of Kevin Spacey from House of Cards, I think you could be his voiceover double. I could be. That's. I could be. That's why I the voice be. is so scary. Oh. You've been doing that all afternoon, and I'm like, oh my god, why is that sending? I've been President voice? Underwood. Yes. Oh. Here I am. Be, think I'm going to get pushed in front of a moving subway. Don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, so California. Yeah. So a whole crop of new laws, January 1st, went to effect. Uh, Chelsea, can you just give us a little bit of idea of, um, some of a the couple of those falls, some of the good ones? Okay. So first, I don't know if you have this happen. I don't work in the private sector anymore. But when you go from job to another job, does your new potential employer ask you how much did you make at your last job? I did not have that question asked to me. I have seen it on applications, but I have not. Uh, have it had it personally asked to me. Well, they will not be asking it anymore. On applications. Uh, a job applicant could um, volunteer that information, how much they made at their last job, but it's they're no longer allowed to ask it, and this is supposed to help with um, pay disparity amongst uh, men and women. So, cool, nobody can ask you That's what good. you made before. Uh, here's an interesting one that is very relevant for millennials. If you willfully record a video and stream it on Facebook of some violent attack, mm -hmm. you could be punished for just that act of filming it. And this is not like you catch police misconduct and you record that. This is you um, are videotaping a group of bullies beat up on somebody. This is, this is if you are taping for World Star on Facebook, you can be prosecuted. Right. Okay. Yes. Good explanation. Yeah. This Just one I love. Animal lovers like this. Yeah. Uh, and I love this because I know the woman who was the big um, movement to get the bull hooks um, illegal to, you know, sort of use to be, to control elephants oh. in the circus. So, um, this is a, an effort by animal activists to, they can't just say we ban circuses, but if they, they ban the use of bull hooks and therefore circuses can't really operate hmm. without them. And therefore we effectively got rid of circuses. Right with, into, right after, uh, PT, like Barnum and Bailey, like closed down, like, well, that's, they saw the writing on the wall. Right. I mean, if you cannot come to California um, you're not going to be making any money. Just go so, see Disney on Ice like we did for Christmas. Yeah, that doesn't involve animal no, cruelty. No. Yeah, so that is awesome. Oh, this one I love. I 
I will no longer be afraid of jaywalking tickets. Nice. When I dash across the street once the hand starts flashing at me. Because I didn't know up until I think it was like recently that once the hand starts flashing and mm. the, you cannot enter the crosswalk, mm. that is considered kind of like a yellow light. Like yeah. you're really not supposed to go through the yellow no, light. No, you cannot step off the curb. Interesting. But um, like what cop is like they did. Sitting there. Well, I mean, they did. But now it is totally kosher to jump into the crosswalk after the blinking hand has started, as long as you get to the other side by the time that the light turns mm. green for the other. So less concerned about <laughs> jaywalking For those that tickets. live in New York, this is the norm. <laughs> Used to it. Oh, and here's, here's something that I'm very thankful for. Big donors to state ballot measure campaigns will have to be better identified on advertisements in 2018. John so, Chung talked about it last time he was here. This is, of know. course, me. Somebody, you know, the lefter of the left is very concerned about the corruption and the hidden influence of big money on our elections. And this is a small but I think meaningful way for us to know who's really um, sponsoring these advertisements and hopefully we'll look to see like oh this is sponsored by the Koch brothers Tom Steyer yeah and it's 30 million dollars well fine I mean and if you know that Tom Steyer's you know sponsoring something if you believe in his politics then you'll know sooner than later what this ad is really about what the proposition is really about if you see that it's supported but how many people are really gonna pay attention to that I think enough of us do well, Drexel. We I'm like, asking. I'm asking the question. I mean, like, well, how all many of our viewers like, like, and like, listeners for because sure. They're, because I, I, I don't know. Like, uh, we'll see how these ads roll out. I'd be interested to see. Like, is it going to be like you know one of those medical commercials that like just rolling off everything? I, is it going to flash at the bottom of the screen? Like, there's got to be a way for people to see it and pay attention. Um, if not, I think that this is going to be a little more obvious. And I don't think, if I remember correctly, there's something about like, you can't have vague names like Americans for a good America, like, cause that's just so random and vague. That's probably an actual <laughs> name of a pack. Yeah. But you'll actually have to see, like if, if it, something is called Americans for good America, you'll probably have to see the individuals who are like the top three donors to that organization. Hmm. And so, You'll be able to know who is trying to influence your vote, which is Us. always a good thing. We are trying to influence your and vote. And finally. The big one. The big one. The Although big wave. You can the now. The big smoke. You, you can smoke. now smoke recreationally. Marijuana is uh, legal in California, medicinal and recreational. Um, the world has not come to an end. No. Um, I was surprised. I was expecting to hear news stories of like lines around the block at the stores. I, I will say, I was in West Hollywood um, uh, the other day with uh, one of our hosts here, and I saw this line. I mean, the lines out of this, like, it was across the street. It was down Santa Monica Boulevard. It hmm. was crazy. It was nuts. Hmm. And uh, my friend, and then I went down the road a little bit further, and there was another one, and there oh. were lines wow. out of the thing. Okay. I don't. I, I think we're not seeing it on the news. Maybe like the lo local news here in California, but I don't think that we're seeing it nationally because it's already been something that's been happening in two other states. Like we're behind two other states. Well, maybe, but I mean, California being the most populous state, it is going to be. It's, it's going to bring a lot of money. I mean, just look at that. I mean, just look at all that tax money coming right, in. Right. Right. I mean, it, I think it's like five billion dollars over the next like five, like five. I don't oh, know. I think it's probably going to be something like seven. Years. Yeah, something it's crazy. Very. But Californians, before you get too excited, know that there are a lot of regulations still attached to this. For example, you can't smoke or consume cannabis in any way, not even just while you're driving, but also while you're riding in a car as a passenger. I think that that might be something that people don't know and might get in trouble for. Yeah, I'm, yeah, stick that reefer in the. Uh, but you can have a gram, department. you can grow your own six plants. Right off your balcony. Yeah. That's nice. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, I, yeah. I can't wait. We're going to, I think we're going to consume less pain medication. We're going to, it's going to have ripples of good news. In California, for sure. And people are going to, you know, come to California, it's going to increase tourism. 
Yeah, uh, In and Out will uh, oh my God, that's make probably... a lot of money. Listen, In and Out just <laughs> In and Out just uh, introduced. What you said? That's what? That's brilliant. Yeah. I didn't even think about. Uh, In if they haven't partnered by now, they're about to partner. They're going to start partnering with people because they just introduced Ghirardelli. Just partnered with them with hot chocolate, so you can get hot chocolate at In and Out now. What? I know it's crazy. So yeah, I mean, if you got the munchies, go to In and Out. Go to Jack in the Box. Uh, Get the are, munchy meal for munchies. We are not here to promote fast food. No, what I'm saying is, is that if you <laughs> if you need it quick, then you I, gotta go get it. You know what we ought to invest in? We need to find like a healthy munchies fast food. Don't look at me like that. I'm I I was trying to figure out what that meant, like what that would there be. There is such thing as healthy munchies. There is. Yeah, where animals were not slaughtered for their. But meat. I want to be able to taste something. Yes. You, Hello, when the reason why people have the munchies is because everything tastes better. We could probably sell people kale and they will like it because everything tastes better. I think I haven't actually had kale when I've consumed it. The truth is, I actually haven't had kale. I mean, I have had kale, but <laughs> I'd, I'd, okay. I'd, I'd, I've never, you know, we'll, we'll see. Maybe, I'm not sure. But, anyways, are, are I, you, do you have your license? You don't need a license. No, I'm saying, did you have your license? I did. For one year. Uh-huh. I had mine for a year, too. Mm -hmm. I felt like a real Californian. I was, uh, yeah, it felt cool, right? I had my little vape pen. Oh, see, I have yet to try. They're cute. It's pen. like this big. Walk around. In I, and out. Yeah, Boop. need to try it. Yeah. It now we can just, we should, we can't do it in the studio. Could you imagine? <laughs> we the can't? studio would be like, uh, I'm like, but it's legal. I don't. Right I, yeah, I don't know what Kevin Murray Trump would report. Say about we'll that. do it in the Trump report. We can't do it on this show. We're we're respectable people in this show. <laughs> <laughs> Would we move a couple doors down? We'll, we'll, we'll do it. So we'll do it down there. We'll do it down there. But I think uh, you know there. Are, I still r run into people. You know, I'm talking about this this new law. There are still people who say, yeah, but marijuana is a gateway drug, and now that opioid crisis is going to spread uh, even bigger to California because now that people are doing cannabis, they're going to start doing. Heroin? I, yeah, they, those those what we've learned when we had Dr. Metzler on a few episodes ago. We know that you 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 cannot this, get addicted to opioids via marijuana. It's yeah, just that's not just happen. not a thing. Yeah, I, and as much as like anecdotal stories of we know people that tried marijuana and they went and tried other things. Apparently, it's not statistically significant, and I think people we know end up. Doing, um, becoming dependent on opioids because of pain-related conditions, right. and if they're using cannabis, they're not in pain. That, we're gonna have. I, I do want to point out because we are talking about marijuana. Like, if you're going out and you're buying marijuana and you're, it's your first time or whatever, just make sure that you're doing it uh, responsibly and you're doing it in doses that you can handle and that you're, you're possibly doing it with people who know what they're doing. Like, I can't roll a joint. Like, I'm not that person. Um, <laughs> make sure you pass. You know, when you're passing it around, that you don't hold it. Like there's there's there, rules to it. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure everybody understands I'm there sure. are rules to smoking marijuana. I feel like there's like of all the online courses that yeah. are now coming out, like how to partake in. Yeah. You know. We will not be doing it on this show, but I'm just giving you the basics. All right, um, I think the people will probably appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, I need to get a haircut. I'm mm -hmm. like, what? I can see myself on my computer. And my bachelor party is next week, so we're going. We'll be in New Orleans, but I cannot, I cannot get a haircut until then. I don't understand what this experience is. Of yeah, see, that's a long story, but basically, I don't want like your 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 haircut time has to be very specific because you don't want to grow a certain length. It's like a whole thing. Anyway, wow. Uh, I mean, I got my haircut, and I didn't. didn't it's yeah, the same. Now my hair as it grows was really fast, but right now I cannot get a haircut, and it is look. Yeah. Um, it's, it's looking crazy. Anyway, um, oh, California, no. speaking of California, Dianne Feinstein, the senior senator from California, released the transcript from the Senate Intelligence Committee, uh, a closed hearing with Fusion GPS founder Glenn Simpson. So if you guys remember, uh, Fusion GPS was the company uh, that was responsible for footing part of, if not the whole thing, of the bill for the Steele dossier, the Christopher Steele dossier, or the PP document. 
Um, <laughs> Republicans uh, have tried and uh, continue to try to paint the Steele dossier as a work of fiction, even though countless parts of the dossier have been confirmed not only through testimony, but through investigations and, and, and investigative reporters. And we've seen articles written about it, and things have just been confirmed from the White House and things like that, even though they've been trying to make this thing sound like it is fake news, and it is not. Um, a couple of months ago, Fusion GPS issued a statement asking the Senate Intelligence Committee to release the transcript because it would be of national interest and provide context to some of the issues that have been brought up during the ongoing Russia investigation. Uh, Senate Intelligence Chairman Richard Burr refused to release the testimony uh, and uh, at the objection of a lot of Republicans because they thought it was a national security issue, uh, as they do. That is That will always be the go-to uh, for Republicans. Um, why they can't release something. Why they can't release something because they believe it's a national security issue. Uh, ranking member Mark Warner, who has been great um, from Virginia, um, spent way too much time placating Richard Burr, trying to be a little nice, like, hey, we're just working it out. Like, he'd go on TV. We're just working it out. I'd like for them to release it. Never really happened. He didn't really push hard enough. Um, and, uh, and then... Diane Feinstein's office today was like, you know what? Here y'all are. Release. Diane Wein Diane Feinstein was our own internal WikiLeaks. Oh, that's an interesting way of putting it. So, uh, I okay. First, my couple questions about this. When was this um, testimony given? This Glenn Simpson testimony. How I old is it? I feel. I think it was October. So it was a long time ago. And so. Why did she decide to release it today? Um, so she said that um, uh, after speaking with the majority of my, her, she released a statement saying that after speaking with the majority of minority committee staff for 10 hours, Glenn Simpson requested the transcript of his interview be released publicly because it was behind closed doors. The American people deserve the opportunity to see what he said and judge for themselves. The innuendo and misinformation circulating about the transcript are part of a deeply troubling effort to undermine the investigation into potential collusion and obstruction of justice. The only way to set the record straight is to make the transcript public. So she did that Chuck Grassley, who's the chairman, um, who's the chairman of another committee, actually he's the chairman of that committee, no, he's the chairman of another committee, said, uh, it's totally confounding that Senator Feinstein would unilaterally release a transcript of a witness interview in the middle of an ongoing investigation, a witness that Senator Feinstein herself subpoenaed last year for lack of cooperation. But then today, then hours later, John Cornyn from Texas, who is like, like Trump's like, guy one of trump's guys was like yeah i would i don't have a problem with diane feinstein re releasing this like it's bizarre hmm. the the people like up supporting her releasing it the people like i mean it is really interesting that she just on her own decided to release this okay fine I like more information the better especially if there's not really a national security issue what does i mean i hear that the testimony is really long and most of it's, it's actually 312 pages okay so like what is the real juicy part of it so um there are th a lot of it is confirming some of the things um that republicans have been like i said republicans have been trying over the past few months to paint the steel dossier as a democratic document because if you remember they tried to link the steel dossier to fusion fusion they said was working with the dnc the dnc christopher Steele was then um, employed by hillary clinton's campaign and like it became this thing so they're trying to paint it as a complete democratic document um, um but a couple of the excerpts that that um that uh, Glenn Simpson said of the Steele dossier, uh, Christopher Steele is a, a MI6 from Britain, Russian expert. Like, that is his field, is Russia. So he's not an American. Like, he has no interest oh. in America's... Like, he has no investment in that other than he is an ally. Um, he worked for an intelligence agency that is an ally to our intelligence agency. Um, and... That's where he started with this whole thing. And and he said that Christopher Steele spoke to the FBI in Rome, giving them a full briefing of the dossier that he had compiled and that the FBI had had other intelligence at the same time about those things in the dossier, probably from George Papadopoulos, um, uh, from an internal campaign source. Hmm. And that they believe that Chris's information might be credible enough because other intelligence 
other agencies had indicated the same thing, and one of the pieces of intelligence was a human source with, with that was inside the Trump organization. That is, this is Glenn Simpson now giving parts of this testimony. So, what we know is that Christopher Steele went to the FBI. The FBI did not go to Christopher Steele. Gotcha. Fusion did not go to Christopher Steele. Gotcha. Christopher Steele, as a part of being an MI6 Russian you know, expert doing his job, found a couple things that he thought were, because he was concerned that information um, that he had gathered represented a national security threat to the United States and that he wanted uh, someone within the American government to know that. Um, he also uh, mentioned that he thought, from his perspective, that there was an issue about whether a presidential candidate was being blackmailed. In this case, it was Donald Trump. So he is trying to, so, so Christopher Steele's whole thing was that he was trying to alert the American government that Russia was meddling in the foreign affairs, it is a national security threat, and it is likely blackmailed. that one of our presidential candidates was being blackmailed by somebody in Russia. Wow. Wow. It's crazy. Wow. Okay. So this, I, I mean, when this came out, I was like, okay, this is interesting. But now I'm like, holy shnikes, this is actually no small deal. This is, we're going to, this is a ginormous. Yeah. Or okay. as Joe Biden would say, it's a big effing deal. Yeah. Okay. Holy. Okay. So, got so, it. And so, that, so, Glim, so then Glenn Simpson said that in his testimony that it only took him 72 hours as a computer whiz, to find Trump's ties to Russia, the Russian mob, and money laundering that was happening out of Russia. Oh, wow. That is in his testimony. That's in his testimony. Okay, mic drop? Yeah. And, like, he was doing, like, like it wasn't like a quick Google search, but it was kind of like a quick Google <laughs> search for him. He was like, R Russia, Trump, Russia, mob, you know, that, like that gift with the lady and like she's like looking everywhere and she's and it's all the equations around her head. Yeah. That, I feel like that that's Glenn, Glenn Simpson wow. like trying to explain everything. Wow. OK, um, I can't wait for the tweet from yeah. the president. That's I don't know that he is going. I'm sure his lawyers are just they are trying to figure it all out. Um, I think they're going to say like, you know, Michael Wolf was really Chris Steele. Like he's gonna try and deflect this with, you know, something about the book. This is just as phony as the book. Uh, the Michael Wolf book, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, but, but it's gonna be some creative last deflection. Last week, Republicans, so, it, it, you know, it's clear that Republicans um, uh, have been trying to, uh, trying to keep this from the American people because last week they recommended that the Justice Department take a hard look at Christopher Steele, um, not only to discredit him, but to possibly jail him for com basically compiling this information and shopping it to journalists, even though it was his information. So he gave it to the FBI, and then journalists kind of got picked like picked up. So they are saying that because he gave that class of what, I'm sure somebody classified it later, information, um, that he gave it to journalists, and that could be a potential crime. Um, but but it look but we but what it looks like is that Republicans are definitely in some sort of full scale uh, cover up of the president, and that's why I say you know blink twice uh, for Jeff Sessions. I'm sorry, <laughs> Jeff Sessions too, um, <laughs> for um, uh, Bob Corker and, and and Lindsey Graham and some of these guys who are national security have been consistent national security hawks, but who are just blinded. The blinders on them is astonishing to me. It's crazy. Uh, Ted Lieu of California said Fusion GPS transcript shows that what Senator Grassley and Graham did last week in publicly referring Christopher Steele uh, for criminal investigation was at best a partisan publicity stunt and at best uh, uh, intentionally designed, uh, well, yeah, intentionally designed to mislead the American people, which is mm -hmm. exactly what has been happening. Wow. Um, so, yeah. That's so, but, and, 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 Looking at all of this, what's happening, like, you know, we I want this investigation to speed up as quickly as possible so we can get so we can actually, you know, get rid of this guy and, I, and move on. No, I'm, I want I'm not so sure. You, you want a slow drip? Page. You want a slow drip? Uh, I mean, the curiosity in me wants us to all come pouring out right now. But I am OK with this kind of stuff coming out enough to reflect poorly upon the Republican Party enough to turn the House and the Senate blue right. at the end of the year 
and then we can just sit pretty while Donald Trump is a lame duck president until everybody sees the light and agrees that Oprah should be president <laughs> in 2020. Over 2020. Well, uh, to your point, we are nine days into 2018. Um, we do have a very big elections coming up. Like, I feel like this is the biggest midterm election. Like, midterms are not flashy things. Like, we don't, nobody ever talks about the midterms, which is why voter turnout is always so low. But I, I, Let's I go on the limb you. and say that voter turnout in at least, I don't know how many states or counties, is going to be higher in the midterms this year than it was for in the, the presidential, 2016. presidential election. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, because, listen, we, we always say, you know, this election is the election of our lifetime. This one, I mean, we, we will never be the same after this. This is the big one. Yeah. But, no, really, we're like, no, no, this one this, actually this is. This one actually is the big one, yeah. It's it's it is exciting for folks like us who are like political like you know nerds where we're looking at stuff because it's exciting to watch. Um, it's scary in certain parts of the country where we want to make sure that people are represented uh, uh, by somebody who gives a shit about them. Yeah. And um, ooh, that's going to be easier in North Carolina. Did you just hear the breaking news that a federal court struck down North Carolina's Jerry like their their map for how they are supposed to vote for their their people was d determined to be unconstitutional because it was very obvious that Republicans were trying to sort of subvert the vote of some people in order to entrench the Republicans into their seats, making it harder for them to be replaced by Democrats. So the judge is giving them uh, another chance to redo their map. And so hopefully North Carolina will I mean, because they're pretty like 50-50. They're right. pretty it's, it's, it's I mean, I, I went to school there. It is a, it is, I mean, the big cities, Raleigh and, and Durham and Charlotte, um, uh, for the most part, are very blue areas. And they have the, they're the densest population. So um, I, I think that North Carolina, North Carolina has a Democratic governor right now. Um, they have a super majority um, I, in the state legislature right now. So it's to kind of deadlock, like, I think I read an article where it said that North Carolina is no longer a functioning democracy. Um, what? Why? Yeah, because they can't do anything. Um, Probably because of this gerrymandering yeah, business. Yeah. So uh, good on North Carolina. Uh, we'll see what happens with that well, Supreme good on Court that judge. Good on that judge. But we'll see what happens with that Supreme Court case that we brought up a couple of weeks ago um, or la before the break. Um, which is about uh, this very same issue. Is very same issue. So yeah. we'll see what the Supreme Court says. Um, but it is so important this year for things like that because judges are confirmed by the Senate. Um, and this year, um, we have some big elections coming up. Like I said, all 435 congressional House seats are up for re-election. 34 Senate seats are up for election. 26 of those seats are held by the Democrats. To flip the Senate, uh, Democrats, so what was it? To, to, yeah, to flip the Senate, Democrats would need to pick up two only two additional races. They need to hang on to their 26, and they need to pick up two more uh, races. Those uh, two races currently held by Republicans in Arizona, which we talked about, Joe Arpaio, and Nevada have a strong potential to turn blue uh, this year, with Texas Democrats showing a strong presence and an effort to knock out Ted Cruz in Beto O'Rourke, who is coming on this show this season, so we're excited to have him. Um, a long shot, but possible Democrats really have... Um, uh, they really have to protect uh, Claire McCaskill in Missouri, uh, Bill Nelson in Florida, and Tammy Baldwin in Wisconsin. I would say like uh, the Heidi Heimkamp and the and the and the Joe, Joe Mansions, but um, the 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 pushback from them will will come from the Democrats if anybody it won't. I mean, there it will be uh, a fight with Democrats. It won't be a fight with the state. Like I think it's a safe blue. Um, for Joe Manchin and Heidi Heimkamp, but it's just going to be what kind of Democrat is going to come out of that. But it also could have worse implications if it's somebody that is too too left um, in those states, and there's a reason why they vote the way that they do, and it's because their states are a little pink, mm -hmm. uh, pinker than purple, you know, mm -hmm. not purple. So I'm really looking forward to, I believe there are eight uh, Republican seats in California that could potentially flip blue. In the House. Yes. Uh, 218 to control the House. Uh, to flip the House, Democrats would need to pick up 25 seats. Sounds like a lot, but when there's win. 435 seats total, 
Maybe and and a handful of those are already right here in California. Um, uh, um, so I think I said right before the break, Democrats are currently, co- I mean, we, we partnered with Run for Something on this show. Uh, they're doing great work, Flippable, Swing Left, all those big um, organizations that are getting out, finding candidates, recruiting them, and getting them to run for something um, have now, Democrats are currently contesting every race across the country for the first time except for 17 races, which they are currently recruiting for. Um, and Like we already had two of the candidates to uh who want to replace steve knight yep santa clarita which they're coming back we're going to do a debate right here That's in the studio it's going to be a lot first of fun time yeah so that was uh katie hill and brian, brian caforio and then soon we'll have on a friend of mine uh who is running against dana rohrbacher though that field is huge there are a lot of people that want to unseat um dana rohrbacher, rohrbacher uh who, who is who republicans have refused to pay for his international flights because he is a compromised United States congressperson because he is because of his ties to Russia. Like there is no reason why this guy should be a United States congressperson. Uh, Daryl Issa needs to be knocked out. And, and, and uh, so there's eight competitive races here in California. There is a, I would say a 90% chance that Democrats flip all eight of those races. Um, and, and so it's going to be very exciting to see. Yeah. Um, now, if to- only we would just start getting our stuff together and start actually coming up with plans of what we're going to do right. once we get in. So we don't have the situation again where we get in and we're like, okay, what now do do? what? Yeah. Um, it, 20, like you said at the top, 25 se- seats may sound like a lot. Uh, they are competitive. Um, and, but 30 Republicans have announced they are retiring at the end of the term. Eight of those Republicans are Republican chairmen of House committees. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that much. Crazy. I feel like, uh, what's her name? Uh, Rachel Maddow right now. Uh, (laughs) The other part of that, so we always talk about the House, we always talk about the Senate, but the other big piece, of course, are governors. Republicans currently control the Governors Association, holding 33 of the 50 governors uh, mansions. There's no a bueno. little chance that gov- that the Democrats are going to control the Governor's Association, but there are at least eight toss-up races uh, that are that we should be watching in Nevada, where Governor Sandoval cannot run for re-election. Uh, Florida, where Rick Scott cannot run for re-election, but it's a good chance that he might run, that he is running uh, for United States Senate against uh, Bill Nelson. Ohio, where John Kasich cannot run for re-election. Michigan, Maryland, and Illinois, all of those governors cannot run for re-election. So there's a good chance that uh, Democrats can pick up those governor's mansions. Maryland has a really crowded field um, of progressive Democrats and great Democrats. Ben Jealous, who uh, used to yes. be the head of the NAACP, uh, is running. Um, Fellow of the Sanders um, Institute currently. Um, Elijah C- uh, Cummings, who uh, I know is out um, and on medical leave right now. He's having some medical issues right now. His wife uh, was running for governor in Maryland. She just suspended her campaign to kind of go be with him. So um, be looking out for those. And uh, somebody asked me uh, th- the other day um, what you can do. First of all, there's a lot of races down ballots. We just talked about the House, the Senate, the governor's race. There's a lot of races down ballot. Um, muni- municipal races that are equally as important in your cities, mayoral races, county commissioner races, city council races, a district attorney race in Durham, um, super important juvenile court clerks in Shelby County, Tennessee. Um, so while all of these national races are really impact us um, as a whole, municipal races are the ones that you really have to be focused on because they affect your day-to-day life um, in your city, um, where you live, what you eat, where you drive, jaywalking, stuff like that. <laughs> like, stuff like that. Yeah. Like those are the things that it's why it's so important to have those municipal races and why you and get involved in those. And those also like load up our bench, right? For the up and comers. Yeah, exactly. If you if you are you know if you sit on a, a commission, a city commission, you know that will catapult your. Uh, if you get appointed to a city commission, that could catapult your political career uh, and get you started to do that. Uh, somebody asked me what we can, what you can do um, is if you're from out of state. Um, Reach out to folks who you know in those areas. Talk to them about their elections. Watch, listen to podcasts or watch shows like ours. Uh, remind them um, that their elections are coming coming up. Donate money to those campaigns. I know that's like the thing is that a lot of us and millennials are like, don't you know how much I'm struggling? Don't ask me for money. But right now, I mean, I don't like how much money has to do with our elections. It's a little bit of the reality right now. I mean, you could help by promoting candidates on social media. That way they don't have to pay 
for social right. media promotions. So you can, in your own way, give to campaigns by promoting these candidates. Or I mean, go do the old school door knocking thing. Like that stuff Canvassing, works for on sure. a local level. Find your local, if you're in your state, find your local Democratic clubs, get involved, sit on a board, County Democratic parties; uh, those are the ones that really choose the candidates, um, and, or become a state delegate uh, to your different to yeah. your your state's Democratic but party. But just so. whatever we do, we can't be like, "Oh my gosh, the Republicans are such a shit show." They're they're coming apart at the right. seams. All I got to do is sit here and eat some popcorn and enjoy the view, uh, and things will take care of themselves because that's just not the way that it works. And also, unless we are actively involved, the politicians don't know what we really want like right. sure they might turn blue but then what are they going to do that's why once town halls in? are so important so show to up go, to those to show up to yeah. those and get out uh tammy in the chat room says would love a whole show on how the maps and gerrymandering affect voting certainly oh, yeah. we'll make that uh, uh something we bring up in uh the next few weeks um as always we love viewer feedback and listener feedback so continue to leave your comments and thoughts on the show or on anything you heard today via twitter at political beat tv or email us at political beat tv at gmail.com or leave your comments um below we love uh, seeing those and getting to know you guys a little bit better we'll actually be back um, January 23rd because I'm off to New Orleans next week Enjoy. so if you're in New Orleans stop by Cafe Dumont I might have to get a beignet and say hi uh, Chelsea where can they find you on Twitter at Chelsea Galicia you can find me at Drexel Hurd we will see you all um, in just a couple of weeks see you later bye from executive producers Maria Menounos Kevin Undergaro Phil Svitek and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.